is Jack Anori Jr. Hello, I'm Don. This is a story from Africa about a cheeky little hare called Mamutla. Do you know why hares have such short tails? Let me tell you. Long, long ago, Mamutla the hare lived in a cave halfway up Kololo Hill. One morning he set off, scrambling over the rocks, down into the grey-green bush and the long belt grass. He was heading towards the waterhole and those tender green shoots that sprouted near the water. Mmm! He shivered with delight. Nothing was as tasty as those shoots, sprinkled with fresh morning dew. He was leaping to the bottom of Kalolo Hill when creak, crack, crash! A marola tree plunged towards him. Swoosh! It almost whipped off his nose and then pinned him down. Tilao the elephant loomed over him. Tilao swirled his trunk, snapped off a branch as if it were a twig, and stuffed the sweet smelling fruit into his mouth. Mamutla tried to look calm, although his heart was throbbing. Good morning, Tilao, he began. Tilao chewed and chomped, but said nothing. I said, Good morning, Tilao, Mamutla repeated a little louder. Tilao twitched his tail, but still said nothing. I said, Good morning, Tilao, Mamutla shouted. What do you want, Pipsqueak? No one interrupts my breakfast. No need to be rude, Tilao. Just because you're biggest, you think you're the strongest. If we had a tug of war, I could beat you any day. Well, Tilao was so surprised that with one mighty sweep, he lifted up the marula tree so that he could see Mamutla more clearly. You? You, Pipsqueak? The elephant blew out a trunk full of air. It would have blown the little hare sky high if he hadn't jumped aside quick as a tick. Tomorrow morning, when sun peeps over the mountain, I'll come with a rope. Then you'll see, Mamutla boasted. Without waiting for an answer, he scampered away towards the waterhole. There he found Kubu the hippo with her eyes half closed, bathing in the water. Good morning, Kubu, he began. Kubu stared at Mamutla and said nothing. I said, good morning, Kubu, Mamutla repeated a little louder. Kubu opened her mouth so wide that Mamutla could see past all her teeth down into the great cave of her throat. When she completed her yawn, she boomed. What do you want, Pipsqueak? No one interrupts my morning nap. No need to be rude, Kubu. Just because you're biggest, you think you're the strongest. If we had a tug of war, I could beat you any day. You? You pipsqueak? The hippo spluttered a mouthful of water. Tomorrow morning, when sun peeps over the mountain, I'll come with a rope. Then you'll see, Mamutla boasted. Without waiting for an answer, he scurried away. All that day, Mamutla worked hard at making an extra long, extra strong rope. The next morning, the little hare was leaping down Kololo Hill. The long, strong rope was hung over one shoulder. Sure enough, Tilao the elephant was there at the bottom of the hill. He pretended to take no notice of Mamutla and carried on munching. Good morning, Tilao. I brought the rope. Mmm, said Tilao. Mamutla skipped up close. He held out one end of the rope. You take this. I'll take the other end and run over there. He pointed to some very thick bushes. When I'm ready to pull, you'll hear me whistle like this. Whee! Whee! Mamutla whistled softly, then held his breath until Tilao began to wind the rope around his single tusk and his trunk. <laughs> Quick as a riverbank fly, Mamutla hopped towards the thick bushes, calling back towards Tilao. You'll soon see that I'm stronger! But Mamutla did not stop at the bushes. He still had more rope as he bounded down to the waterhole. Kuba the hippo pretended to take no notice and sank beneath the water. 
Mamutla waited for her eyes to rise. Good morning, Kubu. I brought the rope. <laughs> Kubu blew a spray of bubbles. Mamutla skipped up close. He held out the end of the rope. You take this. Do you see those bushes? I've left the other end just behind them. I'll run and get it. And when I'm ready to pull, you'll hear me whistle like this. Whee! Whee! Mamutla whistled softly, then held his breath until Kubu clutched the rope tight within her jaws. Quick as a clip springer, Mamutla skipped to the thicket of the bushes. As soon as he had hidden himself well, Mamutla took a deep, deep breath and whistled, this time for all he was worth. From each end, he could hear as Tilao and Kubu began to pull. They pulled and tugged and tugged and pulled. First, it was Tilao humping and thumping and Kubu shaking and quaking. Then it was Kubu humping and thumping and Tilao shaking and quaking. Great drops of sweat poured off Tilao, almost enough to make a river, while Kubu splashed so wildly she might have emptied the waterhole. Mamutla laughed so much that he was nearly sick. He didn't know who looked funnier, Tilao or Kubu. The tug of war continued from sun up until sun down. Neither Tilao nor Kubu wanted to give up because neither wanted to lose. What could be more terrible than to be beaten by a little hare? But just as sun gave way to moon, Tilao the elephant felt that he could not go on for another second. And Kubu the hippo also felt that she must give up. At the very same moment, each of them let go of the rope. Kubu gasped for great gulps of air and collapsed out of sight. Tilao panted like he had never panted before and dragged himself to the water hole. Kubu saw Tilao. And Tilao saw Kubu. And in an instant, they knew what had happened. Were you? snorted Tilao. Were you? spluttered Kubu. Was it Mamutla's imagination that made him see steam rising from both animals? Time to go, he thought. Time to go and get some supper. Mamutla scampered away as Moon took her turn to peek over Lenong Mountain. But not before he let out one last loud wee, wee. Well, Tilao the elephant and Kubu the hippo got over their puffs and pants soon enough. But they did not get over being red in the face. How dare such a little hare trick such important big creatures as themselves? The more they talked about Mamutla, the hotter they became. They decided that the matter should be taken to King Lion. And King Lion decided that the matter should be taken to a meeting. So he called one early the very next morning. King Lion brought the meeting to order with three deep grunts. <coughs> Where is Shwene? Tell him to come before us immediately. Shwene the baboon was King Lion's chief of police. Amongst the smaller animals, he was known for his bite as well as his bark. However, when he strutted into the middle of the meeting of big animals, he made sure to nod left and right before he bowed in front of the enormous rock. King Lion gave his orders. Mamutla the hare was to be captured and transported to the very top of Linong Mountain. The big animals all nodded with approval. We command you, chief of police, King Lion growled, to stand on the very highest cliff and to swing that cheeky little hare around your head twelve times, once for each hour that he made a fool of Tilao and Kubu. Swing him slowly so that he can see just how far he will be going. Do it, he ordered. While all this was going on, Mamutla was sound asleep under the live-long tree outside his cave halfway up Kalolo Hill. He was still dreaming about tugs of war when a sharp tug at his foot brought him to his senses. <gasps> Too late. He woke to find himself hanging upside down over the shoulder of King Lion's chief of police. It was useless to plead, pointless even to ask where he was being taken. Shweni the baboon was clearly on duty. Otherwise, wouldn't he have loved to get those sharp baboon teeth stuck into him? Mamutla shivered. If he wasn't careful, the chief of police might take a bite and then tell King Lion that Mamutla had struggled to escape. But Mamutla also knew that he had very little time. Even on three legs, Shwene leapt from rock to rock as nimbly as little Kololo the Clipspringer himself. Mamutla bumped and bounced against the baboon's back. Yeah. Who 
Would you like some figs, Schwenny? Mum Utler called out. Baboons loved rock figs, but Schwenny didn't reply. I can show you the juiciest. Mum Utler tried again. Schwenny replied with a fierce bark. Mum Utler didn't like the sound at all. They were now bounding across the veldt through the bush. Hanging upside down, Mamutla saw mostly tops of trees. A group of babbler birds burst out crazily into flight. Quick, 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 quick. Mamutla was now beginning to feel really scared. He could feel they were going upwards, up Linong Mountain. A small speck circled high above them. Was it his old enemy, Nsu the eagle? The speck got bigger until Mamutla recognised Nsu's cousin, Linong the vulture. Not much time left. Oh, Schwene, I must thank you, he shouted. The baboon slowed down a little. Yes, I must thank you a lot. They slowed down a little more. The chief of police seemed to be thinking. What do you have to thank me for, he barked gruffly. For not carrying me by my tail. Mamutla's tail had been swinging wildly throughout the journey. Schwene stopped. He dangled Mamutla in front of him. Why? he demanded, pulling back his lips to show Mamutla his long teeth. Because that's where I keep my pride. A hare's tail is his pride and joy. Mamutla spoke sincerely, even though that was not easy for him when hanging upside down. If you hung me by my tail, then everyone would laugh at me. So thank you, Trini. I'm quite ready to die now because I still have my pride. Trini looked suspicious. Mamutla was well known for his tricks. But if it was true that the worst way to carry a hare was by his tail, then that was what he should do, shouldn't he? Why should he allow this hare to keep his pride? So, with his free paw, Schwenny grabbed Mamutla's tail. Oh, I should never have told you, wailed Mamutla. Higher and higher they climbed towards the topmost cliffs of Lenong Mountain. Mamutla could see the waterhole far below. Were those two dark blobs, perhaps Tilao and Kubu, laughing together? They were very near the top. Mamutla glimpsed the whole Lenong family lined up along a bare branch. There was hardly any time left now. Mamutla took a deep breath and counted to himself. Three, two, one. With an almighty leap, he sprang away. Crack! Off came his tail. It hung from the baboon's paw. Mamutla did not even stop to enjoy the astonished look on the chief of police's face. His wounded tail and pride were both stinging far too much. Without turning back once, he hurtled down the mountain. But that wasn't the end of the story. Mamutla spent the rest of the day telling all the other hares that the big animals were going to catch any hare with a long tail and sling him or her off the highest cliff of Lenong Mountain. Be brave! Don't worry about your pride! Be like me and get rid of your tails. And would you believe it? They did. Of course, Mamutla's tail and those of the other hares never grew again, so he could no longer take pride in his long bushy tail. However, as time went by, he was proud to tell the long and hairy tale about why all hares have short tails. Bye for now.